computer show. Get rid of the live here. Let me get to the share. Copy. Escape room. Oops. You don't have to talk. You don't have to pull off. <laughs> okay, Jerry, text your page. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Petito. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true. Really true. Just keep your ideas safe and sound. Safe and sound, safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found, change is found. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jerry Petito Show on Hamilton Radio. So, guys, everyone who knows me knows I'm the author of I'm Not an Addict, I'm Just an Ass. I'd rather be a smartest than a dumbass because, guys, 30 years ago, I was a dumbass. But today, I can honestly say I'm now a smartass. I wrote this book in 2016, and I was actually, believe it or not, woken up in the middle of the night by a tap on my shoulder. God said, write your book. And I giggled and I said, you want me to write my book? I wrote this book in probably three weeks. It's not very big. And I put the meat of what needed to be in here and a lot of poems, just enough to make the addict understand that they are not powerless and that God saved my life and he can save yours. So because of this book, I was actually asked to do an interview on the DJ Danny show on Hamilton radio. And from that interview, they asked me to be a host. And I thought about it at first. I said, no, but then, you know, I thought about it. And I was like, all right, if God wants me to do this, I'm going to do it. Five years later, guys, through this pandemic, a lot of good has come out of it. I revised my book. This is it now. Okay. Five years later, I'm on five different networks. Well, actually six. Um, 2019, I was inducted into the 2019 Internet International Hall of Fame for radio show host. Um, I can't tell you what's happened in the last five years. I'm going to be 60 years old in March, and I'm only saying that to say this. Never put limits on yourself because of your age or what your life once was because we have the power to change everything and anything. And I needed God for that, okay? So I'm gonna say this to you, whether you believe in God or not, you have to put your faith in something greater. Do it now, don't wait till later. Because if I had to go through life thinking I'm it, I couldn't have done it. So say there is no God, right? I still believe there is. So my believing that someone out there has my back help save my life. See what I mean? So I want everybody out there to really 
pay attention to my guest today because we're going to bring some hope to you. And um, I'm going to inter introduce him in one minute. I want to tell you, I'm hooked up with Fire Team Designs, and they did a product line for me. And look at how cool. They did hats. Okay. They did mugs. Okay. They did shirts, sweatshirts. They did silly masks that say, I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass. I mean, come on. If we have to wear these, why not have it say that? And then tumblers. This is the biggest tumbler I've ever seen. There's two sizes. But they have sweatshirts, t-shirts. I mean, anything and everything. Business cards. So if anybody's interested in any of my products, you can get them personalized. You can have your name put on them. Reach out. Fire Team Designs. You can get in touch with me. Having said that, I want to now introduce my guest because it was a little crazy how I met him as well. See, everything happens for a reason. So I'm also, I'm a recovery coach and this all happened over the last five years, guys. I'm a recovery coach. I'm a nutritional health coach. I'm a vegan chef. I saved my life years ago, probably close to 20 years ago now or more, 25 years ago, two cancers through nutrition no medicines, no doctors. I have doctors and nurses in my family. I love them, but I did it completely natural. So I went to have one of my natural visits with this chiropractor guy and blah, blah, blah for the first time. And the receptionist starts talking to me. And I, I can't shut up anyway. So it was an easy conversation for both of us. Her name is Tracy. And I guess we were trying to figure out another appointment. And I said, no, I can't. I have a radio show. And she's like, what do you mean you have a radio show? She's like, my son Alex wants to do this. I said, you're kidding me. So of course, I hand her a card. And the rest is going to be history because this guy's going to be famous. So without further ado, I want to introduce Alex Bolins from World to World. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful intro. I really appreciate it, especially having me on it. You know, it means the world to me. World to world. Yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your age and, and your goal and all this and about world to world. Start there. Okay. So I'm Alex. I'm 22. And I started this podcast uh, last year around the spring. Uh, I figured better time than never, especially with 2020, you know, everything going on with the pandemic and stuff, everybody's inside. And so you need some form of entertainment to keep you from going crazy. And I figured, you know, I love podcasting. It's the best time to get into it. And so I have a lot of goals basically with what my podcast is. Right now it's mainly music and I cover a lot of like today's like hip hop or rap. But I don't limit myself to any genre. I love music of all kinds. Uh, my parents have put me on to a lot of great music from anywhere from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So I like to listen to a little bit of everything. And I like me. I'm someone like I feel like um, I can get people. I can. I know what, like what music you would like, basically. And so I like putting people onto music or artists that they might not know who you know have a great story or maybe share some of the same struggles that we do. Uh, I just like to listen to people that I can resonate with and you, you can feel the emotion and passion in their music. And I like to put other people onto that because that's one of the most beautiful things about music is how it makes you feel. You know, it's amazing that just like piano chords or just like, you know, a guitar riff can make your body feel like it's undescribable. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things definitely. Um, but I'd like to expand. Like I, um, I was mentioning to you, I haven't had actually a guest on yet other than, you know, one of my friends as a co-host. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking to book the incomparable Jerry Petito for my first <laughs> interview. But um, I think, you know, interviews like this are just amazing because a conversation can go on for hours and you can get so many great things out of it. Uh, you know, we're all humans. We all go through the same thing, no matter what. Like, unique experiences, but we go through a lot of the same struggles. So the best way is to help each other out is just kind of talk through it. You know, you figure things out. You get different perspectives that you may not have had before i just like picking apart brains and such and and when you could just go back and forth even if you're di um disagreeing like it doesn't have to be disrespectful you can disagree and have a respectful conversation that's if it's disrespectful you're not going to get anywhere so you might as well just you know help each other kind of like build the blocks essentially for a foundation and i think that can apply to anything that could be music that could be life uh, i know like 
I, mean, I definitely want to do more mental health, like vulnerable episodes because everybody, everybody goes through stuff. I know I keep saying that, but it, it really is true. Right. I know it's, it's so easy for people to feel alone when it comes to say depression or something or anxiety, anything like that. But it, so many of us face it, whether it's every day or not. So I think the best thing to do is just talk it out. And I know personally, like I listen to many podcasts, so it, it always helps me, especially like if I'm alone or something at work, I just pop it in. It feels like you're having a conversation with the people you're listening to. So, you know what, you you just said at least three times about what people are going through. Mm -hmm. I want to read a very small poem and then we'll continue on. And I want to ask you about who your favorite musicians are and all that great stuff. But I think it's appropriate because of everything you just said. Yeah, absolutely. This poem is called Put Down the Gun. Because I'm going to share something with everyone out there right now. A fellow co-host of mine is struggling. She tried to commit suicide last night and she's on life support. And I'm just hoping that this show tonight can help someone out there if they have these thoughts. Please don't do it. Put down the gun. Here we go. I had to have this purple gun just in case my life was done. I kept it safe locked in my room because I was filled with gloom and doom. Yes, there were times that I just knew if I loaded it up what I could do, but I kept on hearing that gentle voice. Put down that gun, you have that choice. Life may seem hard at the end of the day. That's when you need to really pray. Dear Father, I beg you to show me the truth. How can life be so bad when I'm only a youth? Get rid of that gun and go take a shower, ask someone for help. You do have that power. So I just thought that would be appropriate to say right now. Um, and I wanna say one more thing, because I know there's a lot of people struggling right now and maybe have thought about suicide, right, Alex? You and I talked about this. You had a friend, yeah. now I have a friend. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're rich, whether you're famous, Everyone goes through it. Elvis Presley, his grandson, Ben, not only did he sign a million dollar record deal lately, he looked like his grandfather, the most beautiful man in the world, had a beautiful voice, great family, and he killed himself this past year. So it's, it's, it's out there and it's horrendous and it doesn't matter what our situations are, everyone feels it at times. So Alex, mm. Let's talk about your music and, and how it's helped you and who were your fa favorite artists growing up and who are they now and what's changed in that? Ooh, a long line of history. Um, earlier, it was definitely just listening to whatever my parents played. And um, my dad loved like Earth, Wind & Fire. It's one of my favorite bands probably ever. Okay. It's classic. Um, the Bee Gees, he loves, very huge fan. I'm a huge <laughs> fan as well. Uh, I love America. Another great 70s band. Uh, I like a lot of people from Motown, like Rick James. DeBarge wow. is great. Um, when I was in like fourth grade, I was a huge into the Beatles. That was like my Beatles phase. I had that for like a couple of years. And I still love them too. That's my thing is like my music repertoire, I guess you would call it, kind of just always grows. I'm always looking for new artists, new songs. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be any genre, any language. I listen to songs that are just completely Spanish because, you know, it just sounds great and makes you feel something. And... Right now, or basically since like middle school forward up until this point uh, is when I started listening to rap like super heavily. And it's, it's definitely, I know it's the go-to. It's definitely, it's my favorite genre. And there is, I know there's like a lot of things on the radio that, you know, people get like a conception of or an idea of, but there are beautiful literal poets in, in rap today. Um, many that like, I can't even describe what rap has done for me. That's why it is my favorite genre because it got me through middle school and high school with just some artists sharing what they struggled with. And like, I felt, I didn't feel alone anymore when I heard their voices in my headphones. I have to say something to you and then you continue. This is important. Mm -hmm. You just, I'm going to be using your name as well when I use Randy Shank's name because you just said something that resonated for me that I didn't understand. Years ago, this young African-American guy from Trenton at the time, he lives down south now, and he goes by Director Six. You should hook up with him and say hello and tell him you're my friend. Gotcha. He got in touch with me and he said, Miss Jerry, could you interview me? I'm a rap artist, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, I said, can you keep it clean? He said, I promise for you, I'll keep it clean. He came live in studio, Hamilton Radio, and 
he was incredible. And, and this is what he said, because I asked him live. I said, you're talking to someone a little bit older. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. This is what he said, Alex. He said, Miss Jerry, everyone has a story to tell. And some people need to tell their story for survival. And some of us only know how to tell our story this way, because this is our story. When he said that to me, Alex, I love him. To this day, we're connected. He moved down south. He came and surprised me live in studio last year or a year and a half ago, two years, whatever it's been, but two years ago. Um, yeah. I love him. And he goes by Director Six now, guys. Check him out. You have to hook up with him. And you just said something beautiful as well that it helped you too. Like, let's talk a little bit more about that with rap. Yeah, what Director Six said is perfectly put. That's the thing is many of these rappers, what people, you know, kind of don't realize because they can't get past like the vulgarness yeah. or the explicit content, which I understand. I was I was kind of the same way at first. But you realize like it's that is their survival and they're telling their stories and it, it might be filled with rage or it might be filled with sadness because of just everything that they've been through. And yeah, like not that all rap does it, but you know, most rap has like violence and drugs in it. But it's like these are the environments these people are growing up in so they're just rapping about what they see the same way you know like a rock artist would rap about what he saw so it's very similar in that sense and I, like there's a lot of beautiful like concept albums um if you're familiar with Kendrick Lamar he's one of the biggest rappers nowadays he has a song okay. um called how much it how much a dollar cost and it's talking about you know the worth of a dollar but it's it's a story of him at a gas station and he was out pumping gas and there was like a homeless guy asking him for a dollar. And it's just like kind of it's Kendrick going back and forth in his head. Like, I could give this guy money, but what is he going to do with it or blah, blah, blah. Like, why, you know, why is he begging all this stuff? And then you come to find out at the end of the song that the man, the man who needed the money, the homeless guy was God. And so it, it's just kind of and he's like, you, you know, you're a rich rapper and you're driving this car and you're fine. And here's a homeless person asking for a dollar and you couldn't even give it to him and ended up being God. And so that's something like I got, you know, first time I listened to it immediate, like chills all up and down my back. And that's just like one example too. That's not even how like much, a resonant Wait, one. it's called How Much Does a Dollar Cost? Yeah. I have to check it out. Continue. For sure. Um, I'm trying to think of more, even just like, you know, most people know Eminem. He's like one of the yeah. biggest rappers ever. Um, yeah. That was he initially got me into rap and it's because he was just an outcast and he was like bullied when he was a kid. Not that I was bullied or anything like in the extent that he was, but I just always felt, you know, I was very shy and, and I didn't really open up much. And, you know, I had my good friends, but like, I wasn't, I don't know. I just kind of felt like an outcast at times. And so like, there's many Eminem songs that go through that or just dealing with like family issues or anything. And it's just, it really does, like, I know a lot of people, because I actually have, like, tattoos of, like, rappers and stuff, not, like, faces or anything, but, like, of their art, basically, like, their artwork. And people are like, really? Like, you have, a, like, a rapper, like, inked into your leg? And I'm like, yeah, I do, because they were well, there for me. Like, right? yeah, exactly. I'm like, right? you don't, like, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't understand it, but, like, I can't even explain to you the things that these rappers have done for me, like, just... And it's not like, you know, you don't take everything they say, like, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. It's not like you take it by, like, you're idolizing them. Like, I don't idolize anybody, but I think it's great to have, like, I listen to genuine people who have, you know what I mean? They do, one of my favorite rap groups, they had um, a show in Flint, uh, Michigan. And, you know, like, they've had bad water for, like, a few years now with, like, their pipelines and everything. And instead of charging people for the show, they said your ticket is a case of water. So just show up with like a case of bottled water and you get in the show. Like things like that or like just fan interactions when they're actually genuine and they're not acting like they're a level above you or like they're a celebrity. If they just, most of the artists I listen to are very human. And that's what I love the most. If you're just a genuine person and you put your pain and your passion into what you write, that's all I can ask for. So you mentioned tattoos, and I want to say something about that. Okay, yes. so I have a little tattoo, mm -hmm. okay? And the reason I didn't get more was because it hurt. All right, listen, <laughs> and I had a baby natural, but that pain to me wasn't necessary, okay? So anyway, um, I love tattoos, and I'm going to tell you why. Because my grandfather 
had he was in the 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 army way back you know he would have been like 120 mm -hmm. now you know what i'm saying and my grandfather in the army they would tattoo you and he had black tattoos all down his arms and when those arms hugged me those tattoos were part of that yeah. i grew up thinking that was love then i'm also an artist and i went to art school so when i see tattoos and beautiful artwork it it's all nothing but great feelings for me right so everyone and anyone out there who's going to judge tattoos it's because they didn't mean anything to you mm -hmm. you know what i mean but exactly tattoos to me are beautiful and and what you just said about your tattoos is so nice it's yeah. just it, it goes very hand in hand with music you know what i mean like it's a it's a work of art at the end of the day that somebody really like they perfected their craft and you know it's a lot of trust to let somebody you know, tattoo something on you that's permanent and, you know, they're using needles or whatever and like needles stacked up on top of each other. Right. So it's, it's kind of like a, a double whammy, you know, and if you get like a music tattoo, like I have, because it, it means two things to me, you know what I mean? I, it meant enough where I wanted to actually get it in my skin for the rest of my life. And then at the same time, even if I didn't have it, like those musicians or those artists don't mean that much to me because they helped me get through so many things and help me be confident and get to where I'm at today. Alex, what you just shared is going to help save somebody's life today. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Like That would be amazing. You know what? You, you just did something for me today, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I, I always think like younger people. I don't really have a lot in common with them and conversations. You just taught me something today. You just taught yeah. me something today, so thank you. Oh, of course, okay. thank you. And Absolutely. that's another thing too I like is, um, or even what I'd love to do with my podcast is kind of like bridge the gap uh, is something I love to say a lot because again, we're all humans. We can learn from each other, whether you're 40 years apart in, in age. I know there's, you know, obviously there's going to be a generational gap. Like, you know, if you talk to most people like my parents' age, they're going to be like, what, what the hell are you listening to? Like, what, what yeah. is this music or something? But then, you know, I could say something like the, the how much does a dollar cost story and like that might intrigue them and they might check it out. It's like all it takes is one little little thing, just like a conversation like, hey, check this out. People just need to be more open minded is the real key, in my opinion, both young and old. You know what I mean? Because young people are they're kind of the same way sometimes. Like they're like, oh, what's this old music? I don't want to listen to it. And I'm like, don't sleep on, you know, Prince or something because it's old. Like I, you don't want to do that. <laughs> it's amazing that music started it all. You know, Elvis Presley. You know, he's my guy. Forget it. You know. Yeah. Um, so I want to say something to you. You know, everything you're saying is just resonate. It's beautiful. Okay. And you know, when I was growing up, I mean, think about that, right? You and I are about forty years apart. Think about when I was growing up with the music. I'm listening to Elvis and the Beatles, and my parents are like, "What are you listening to?" Imagine that right. being back then. What are you listening? Right. To, okay. <laughs> Imagine That's... them listening to rap today. And yeah. Hip hop. They'd be like, "Okay, listen to the Beatles and Elvis all you want." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all. It's it's all relevant. It's all mm -hmm. relevant. It's funny. It's it's just like cyclical. You know what I mean? Life is that way where things just kind of come back and come back, and it's like it, it's like almost you know every kid kind of becomes that parent that's like, "What are you listening to?" Like everybody loves their music that they grew up with, but I think it's, and I'm not saying like you have to love everything, but I just like to get, I like to take from each, you know what right. I mean? Ooh, I have my nineties music. I got my eighties music, my seventies, two thousands, two thousand tens. I think why not just have all types of music? Cause there's something good everywhere. There's too many humans on this earth for there not to be good music. You're, you're making so much sense, Alex, you really are. Because unless the music is downright violent and horribly sexually explicit for violence because i'm mm. sorry with me that there's nothing good that's all negative you know what i mean but yeah. anything else like with what you're saying can can help people so much and especially through this past year people are locked in you know and, and mm. this music and stuff has really helped save people's lives so that's right. beautiful so now and it, world to world oh well, continue you guys say what you want to say first uh, you got it you're good you could what were you gonna say um basically i was gonna say even like say if like the rappers who just have like music like even just party it doesn't have to be rappers either it could be pop stars anybody who just has like party music where it's okay. kind of like 
some like there's not much substance you know what i mean it's more of just like a feel good like that does stuff and not really for me mostly but like that does stuff for people too even if like they can't resonate with it or yeah. relate to it directly like they could still it just makes them feel good and that's the thing too like you know you don't like the how much a dollar cost example like i love that song but i wouldn't play that if i was like at a you know party with friends because it's not that type of song whereas right. like you know i'm gonna put on something that feels good and makes everybody in the room happy and just kind of upbeat and dance you know, I got, I can't wait to now hear that song. Cause you know, that's the first thing I'm going to do when we're done with this interview. Okay. Yeah. I've had, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a Christian. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know how, like, there's so many Christians that are like, everybody's going to hell if they don't do this. And if they don't do that, you know, yeah. I am so far from that Christian. I judge no one. I don't, you know, I was actually judged by a Christian family member one time. And they said to me, you don't even judge prostitutes. And I said, why would I do that? That prostitute may have been raped by an uncle and has a little kid that she has to feed at home. And the only thing she mm -hmm. knows is that. So you're right. I don't mm -hmm. judge, but I'm not going yeah. to. So no, I had I a think that's... Go oh, ahead. Sorry. No, I think, you, you know, talk. in my opinion, like, well, I feel like, you know, only God can judge. And even then he wouldn't judge because we're all his children, whether you, you believe or not. Like, like you said, you right. have to believe in something higher, whether it is a God or if it's the universe that's or right. anything else like it is. I think, you know, everything has a plan and nobody yeah. should be judged unless it's our creator. That's right. And so this Christian had a poker league. I'm a poker dealer, player, blah, blah, blah. And it was called mm -hmm. Ms. Night Owl Poker. And I had it for like probably a good eight years in Mercer County. I gave it up a couple of years ago. And uh, I was judged by so many Christians. How could you be in the bars every night if you're right? Hooters, Hooters. Someone accepted Jesus Christ after my game in my car and went yelling through the parking lot. I just accepted Jesus. If I die tonight, I'm going to heaven. Someone called me in the middle of the night from my poker league crying, I need God. Do you know how many people accepted God through my poker league? There's a video you're going to want to see. There's two of them. My two favorite videos. I'm letting Alex know this and all the listeners. Okay. One is called the church pew or the bar stool. Okay, it's incredible. And the other one is this young hip hop artist rhyming it, incredible and why I hate religion, but love God. So you gotta, gotta check those two out. They're my favorite. Okay, so I will take the bar stool over to church pew 50% of the time when I know that that's where people need help. So there you go. Wow. So there you go. Nice. nice. So talk about world to world now. Let's see what what's your goal, what's your mission, what's happening, where are we going with it? Um, like I said, I got I have plenty of ideas. It's almost like too much at at some points, like sporadic. But mostly, like all the episodes I have under my belt have all been music and just kind of breaking it down and analyzing it. Um, like I said, even the, you know going back to that, how much does dollar cost song? Like I could talk about that song for like ten or fifteen minutes. When you just break it down line by line, and you you really do see how it is poetry. Like that's what I do a lot of times. I'll look at the lyrics, and then you think about it without the music, and you're like, wow! Like just someone wrote this is like amazing. Like I would take this as like an essay for school or something. And so I do a decent amount of that on there. Uh, I definitely like. Like I said, I'm looking more to have just interviews with really just about anybody. Like I wanted to support local artists and people who are just chasing their dreams because I think we have one life. So it's like, why, why settle for something and why not? And I think you could do both. Like I, I really believe you could just have like a side job on the, on the meantime to make you money so you can achieve your dreams. I think people think it's like one or the other a lot. And what I've noticed from listening to so many podcasts with so many guests is that's how it was for everybody. Like they, they hit that spot where they were like, you know what I can, like, why am I doing this? Like, why can't I just go get what I want? And so like, I think that's the biggest takeaway I would want from people listening to my podcast is that really anything's possible. We live in, in such a time now too, with social media. I know it's like a double-edged sword, you know, it has a lot of um, detriments to it, but like the benefits are, you know, countless, as you know, like we're on Facebook right now and, and YouTube, so it's like there's the beauty of social media right there. We can just achieve and, and do what we want and strive for it because there's a lot of people out here going to want to listen or watch. And I know I want to do other things too. Like I actually I have a lot of TV shows I enjoy that um, same thing. Like I kind of want to analyze them and break them down because um, say like, do you know uh, Breaking Bad? 
I know of it, yes. Yeah, so obviously it's like a super huge popular show. Um, but for great reason, it, it is an amazing show, very well written. But like there's so many little things that you pick upon when you watch it over again. Like there's even the color schemes of like the clothes that the characters wear represent something. Um, there's just themes and symbols all throughout. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. It really makes you appreciate the work and the effort that the people who created it put into it. And I think that goes for music and for TV shows or even like I said, I want local artists. So like even a producer, I think producers are very like kind of not ignored, but looked over because you think about it, it's like most, at least music nowadays is a lot to do with the beats and like the instrumentals more than it is even like the singing or the rapping. And I think, you know, they need, they deserve a lot of shine and a lot of light. And or even just like, maybe if you paint canvases, canvases or something or just anything art really. And, and like I said, I just, I want to get people on for great conversations that can just, you know, maybe save somebody at, at the very, you know, best case scenario and then very worst case scenario, you know, whatever. Some people just tune in and get a laugh. Like even that, that's fine. As long as you smile, anything is, it's just something to pass the time to. I know how that is. Like when I listen to podcasts, sometimes it's just like, Oh, got nothing else to do. Put it on for a few hours. So it's definitely, I'd say where I'm at with it. I definitely want to expand more on on the rest of my music too, though. I've just I've have been doing just like today's rap music, so I I want to get more to older music too because I think people my age need to hear it and need to appreciate it more than they do because uh, a lot of people don't know the music. I have to interrupt you because I don't want to forget this. Speaking of older music, okay, did you ever hear of um, Kenny Vance and the Planetones? And he used he started Jay Black and the Americans back in the day. Did you ever hear of him? What was the first one you said? That sounded very okay. familiar. Planetones. Kenny Vance and the Planetones. Planetones. Okay. It sounds very familiar. I'd have to yeah. hear something. Okay, so do you know, remember the song Kata Mi Amai? Okay, because that was I can't sing. If you Google him, you're gonna be like, of course I know him, especially your parents. Yeah. The world knows this man. He is a legendary icon. And I just got to interview him on Remember Then Radio. And he doesn't do too many interviews anymore. And he said yes to me. And let me tell you, he made my year. This just happened this Wednesday, um, Saturday. So I'm on cloud nine from it. And I'm going to say something. And I'm saying that because you just said about you want to play music from back then. So they started it. If it wasn't for them, I don't even know where music would be today. And if we think right. about it, and I know you know this, because for you to be saying the things you're saying, I'm sure you thought of all this. They didn't have social media. They had, listen, I'm going to tell you a funny story he tells on stage, okay? And then I'm going to tell you a beautiful story about what he does on stage with his son. So he actually tells this story, and it's hysterical. The guy's in his, his, his 70s, right? And he came out and told us that back in the day, he was a teenager and him and his buddies uh, wanted to record the song, okay, Jay and the Americans. And they wanted to record, so they were actually able to walk into a studio back then and just say, hi, could we record a song? I mean, think about the difference then and now. So they right. walk into a studio and the, the guy at the desk says, you know what, we're really busy today. We're not gonna be able to do it. Come back in a few days and we'll see if we can get you in. They go home to his house and he tells his mommy, he says this on stage and his mommy says, you go back there right now and you tell them your mother said they're going to listen to you guys. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid of her and went back and they tell the receptionist, our mother said, and they're like, well, if your mother said, all right, let's do it. And that (laughs) was how Jay Black started. Jay Black and the Americans from Kenny Vance. Imagine that now. Part two of this story with Kenny Vance, and this is, you're going to love this part. During his show, he does this kind of like planetone walk, this robotic walk that everyone knows, and that's his thing. And they go crazy when he does it, okay? He Mm -hmm. takes, he wears a hat, a fedora hat, and he takes his hat off, and he's going to hand it to his son. And he says to the audience, should I hand him the hat? The audience throws hats on the stage now. And they're like, give him the hat, give him the hat. I never realized the extent of what that meant. I knew kind of, but not the extent. So I messaged his son. 
you know, we're working out this interview. And I said, so lad, did dad give you, pass you the hat yet? And do you know what he said to me? No, Jerry, I won't let him yet. Because you know what that means, right? That means he'll, he'll be stepping down. Yeah. It was so beautiful. So beautiful. Wow. It was so And beautiful. that would just be like, it's like the passing of the torch. And he said, okay. I'm not ready. Okay. It's so beautiful. So that is, people, you know, young crazy. people have to understand and know and respect these old timers because it was, it was because of them, you know, they were singing on street corners and got noticed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the mobs were involved in a lot of it. I learned that too, from interviewing most of these guys. Yeah. I didn't know. And I can get wild. you incredible interviews. I can get you Al Contrera from the mystics, Hushabai. And he wrote a song. He wrote, I mean, he wrote a book, the mob, the mystics and Hushabai. I could get you anyone you want. I can get you, oh, Larry Chance from the Earls. Remember then. I can get you um, Ken Brady from the casinos. Okay? I mean, so listen, you're right. They need to know about these artists because, and again, they didn't have technology. Imagine us trying mm -hmm. to do what they did on the street corners. I can't even and, imagine. <laughs> and walking into things and saying, my mother said, you have to hear me today. Right. Like things were so just like concrete back then, I feel like. And even I don't know how they came up with stuff back then. Like I, that's what I think of a lot of the times when I listen to older music is like you just created this. Like this wasn't anything you didn't copy it off of somebody. You weren't influenced. Like you just made that in in like a studio too. like not today. You can like phone in a verse. You know what I mean? Like you just go record it on a laptop and then send it to somebody. Boom. It gets mixed into a song. Whereas like back then it was just. It was like everybody in a room together. Like that's what I think of when I listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I'm like, there's probably like 12 people on different instruments and singing and and just you know doing their thing in one room being recorded. And I'm like, that blows my mind. And with how amazing it came out, and like you said, no social media back then or just even the technology. It's like how how do they do it? It's you have to appreciate that. You think about this stuff a lot. <laughs> You are amazing. Thank you. I try. For your age. No, but I mean that. I've never heard a young musician say the things you're saying. You know, they'll say, oh, they were incredible. They started it. They were, you know, no mm -hmm. one's ever said the things you're saying because you're right. Uh, I can't even believe you're thinking about this stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why I started, you know, this really, too, was kind of like that was the catalyst was like, I think about this stuff in my head all the day or all day when I'm listening to music like that. I'm like, how, like, it just, it's like everybody needs to like slow down and then take a good look and appreciate it because you can do it like in a sense. And we're in such a people's like attention spans are short nowadays and, and people move on, you know, like an album that came out a month or two ago is old now. Like they're like, Oh, that's an old album. It's like, that's like, it's been out for two months. Like how have you even digested and enjoyed it enough? And so when you, you know, kind of take a step back and you look at everything and you think about everything in that way, it helps you appreciate it so much more and, and not even just appreciate it, but you enjoy it so much more. I think that's the big key that everybody misses out on because I know these things and I've thought these thoughts, I can enjoy my music 10 times more than I ever did. And then it means so much when I go to a concert and see these people live because I know how much work and commitment, dedication went into it. And a lot of these people too, you'll find out like in their interviews, it was all by, not all by chance, but you have to, it's like a good mix of both. You have to be hardworking, committed and dedicated and very consistent. But all of them have had like a kind of like a whoa chance, you know what I mean? Like a one in a million kind of opportunity and they took it and they ran with it. And I think just so many people need to do that with whatever it is that they desire to do. You know, whatever your dream is, just never give up on it and, and keep chasing it. And you know what I mean? That's what everybody's been there, even the most famous people. Um, actually, like how I came up with the World to World podcast name, okay. I was watching, um, if you're familiar with Mike Tyson, I'm sure. Oh, come on. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. I know. I know. That was a joke. <laughs> um, uh, but Mike Tyson actually has his own podcast, and it's amazing. I actually, because I never, I missed that. I was born in 98, so I missed all of Mike Tyson's, like, you know, his era. So I never really got the magnitude of how large he was, uh, kind of like a larger than life figure. And then also just how like crazy and chaotic his life was. 
but now when you listen to him on his podcast he's so reflective and he's speaking from such a mature state like and and then you forget that when he was the heavyweight champ back in the 90s or in the 80s he was like 18 20 years old like younger than i am now and he had like everything he could want and he went from nothing to everything like on top and just how much that could mess with your mental and everything but they actually had on, on his podcast they had another podcast that i listened to they had their co-hosts on and so they were just talking about podcasting and with the one um Joe Budden, he's a, a rapper, but he's more of like a radio personality nowadays. He kind of retired from rapping and he has his own podcast. It's very good too. He said um, that these platforms are the only platforms that will explain the world to the world. So when he said that, that resonated with me super heavily because they were just talking about, um, they're asking Mike, like, you know, were you ever nervous like before a fight? Or, you know, did you ever have like butterflies or anything? And Mike Tyson looked at them very seriously and was like, I was scared for my life every single time I went in that ring. He said, I feared I was going to die. And the one co-host was like, he's like, that just blew my mind. He's like, because growing up, you were literally known as the baddest man on the planet. And like, we look forward to you knocking out some dude in one minute and 30 seconds. And to hear that you were scared for your life every time you walked into the ring. He's like, that just like messed me up. He's like, I never would have known that perspective or anything. And then like, that's right when they said that, you know, that's why these podcasts are so important because they're one of the only platforms that will explain the world to the world. And that really just perfectly summed up why I, I love podcasts so much for, you know, many reasons, but that one, especially because it could just give you pers like, that's so many things in one. It was perspective. It was, you know, a learning experience. It was just so many things. I have another guest for you. Okay. I'm going to tell you about two people and I'm going to tell you my perspective on boxing and then and now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can't believe yes. you brought that up. So I interviewed someone who is, he actually um, is a bodyguard in the Hamilton Township area. And okay. And he was a boxer or a fighter, you know, local, and he had tattooed on his knuckles, won't fail, okay? Mm. And I said to him, I don't understand it, I'm sorry, I just don't understand people wanting to get in a ring and just punching each other in the face and almost killing each other. I don't get it and I never will. Yeah. He said, well, <laughs> let me make you get it. And he did. And he said, Jerry, let me tell you a little bit about my life. And he told me his abuse and a brother dying and okay, on and on, right? Mm. He said, when I get into the ring, it's not about me punching the other guy. It's about me being able to take that punch and standing up and walking away from it. Yeah, there's chills okay. all up my back. Okay, I got chills. I love him. To this day, I love him. I'll hook you up with him. But now I'm going to tell you about Nathaniel Miller. Did you ever hear of him? Sounds familiar, but I'm not, okay. I'm not positive. He's retired. And I interviewed him, and now he's a friend of mine. He was a, I'm going to get this wrong, but not the middleweight champ. What's the other word for middle? There's another word. Welterweight? Welterweight, okay. maybe. Okay, something. Okay. Not he positive. Was, he was the world middleweight, but that other word, champion of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay? <sighs> and I got to interview him, so I'll hook you up with him. Okay? I mean, it's just so crazy, right? Because right. now... I get it. Yeah. Now I don't just look at them like you're an idiot. Now I get it. And that's literally like that example and uh, the example with, uh, did you say Six Degree was the rapper's name? Um, or Degree okay. Six? I also, uh, so uh, Director Six, I hooked you up already on Facebook. That's what I was doing. I was typing. So I sent you mm -hmm. guys a hello to each other and I tagged you and said, yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah, like the, those two examples are perfect for like exactly what i was saying like it, you right. didn't understand the fighting each other in the ring and you couldn't understand like the rap and both just two people you know one from each one just told you like one story or one even just like quotable and it opens up a whole world of of things yes. just in your mind like even more thoughts and then you get more interested and more intrigued in in what what they're going through and and because I it was the same way for me just recently like I always enjoyed like uh, UFC and boxing and stuff but I started getting into it more and more this past year like you know with the virus and everything so I was just inside watching like fighting videos and stuff 
and I had, you know, same thought. I'm like, who actually, like, what makes you get in there and want to just like, no human, the human body is not built to fight. Like you, it's so dangerous and they go in there night in and night out and they do it. And it is like, what, what makes you, but it is like you're a product of your environment, both the nurture and the nature of how you grew up, you know, really affected how you know, like the, tra the trajectory of your life. But wait, you said something, what you do. But wait, you said something I'm not sure if I totally agree with, and I'll tell you why, that the human body was not made to fight survival of the fittest. We were back True. then, if you think about it, right? If you think yeah. about it, we it's had more to, like, I know, more like that's survival, yes, like opinion, you're surviving. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, but I mean, it is innate in us to react when we have to. Yes, fight back when you're pushed against the wall, basically. Right. So these mm. fighters taught me that they are pushed against a wall and that's how they have to survive. Yeah. See? That is that is crazy. It's just such a it's like a mentality people don't understand or it's just hard to grasp because that like a UFC or a boxing match is literally like a war. And like you just gotta think of how like you gotta it's such a different mentality when they're in there. Like people say that a lot, or even with like um, NFL players, because that's crazy too. You know, it's like two, 300 pound men just running right. as fast as they can at each other, okay. tackling each other. <laughs> and then like, and I know like people will get upset, like when they celebrate and I used to kind of be that way, but like, I'm like, man, they're in a completely different mind state. Like it's a war. They're going out there like with their brothers. That is their teammates. You know what I mean? Like that's a brotherhood and you're going out at the highest level of your profession that you've worked your whole life to get to and now you're at that highest level yeah if you score a touchdown you're gonna do a flip or a little dance like why not you deserve it and it, it's kind of like my daughter has a brother from her dad and we're all very close steven shimko and he was the assistant coach for the seattle seahawks he oh, was yeah. injured in college so he can't play football anymore so he's a coach now but then he got a job i don't want to mess this up as the head coach uh for um they're gonna kill me i forget where another state okay boston he's the head coach for boston okay he's college football okay. okay but now he's got another offer and i'm not sure yet i can't talk about it for nfl again but anyway um and i was the same person like what are you crazy why would you want to do this don't do this you're gonna get hurt why blah, 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 right but mm -hmm. you know, again they have their reasons that make their lives fulfilled through doing what's their plan. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's kind of the same thing with even like a music taste, you know what I mean? You think like, why are you listening to that? But it's different, different for everybody. Everybody has uh, kind of like to each their own, you know what I mean? Everybody has the things that they went through that makes them, maybe not make them right. like it, but helps them, you know, certain things speak to certain people and it's not always right. going to be that way. Not everything is for everybody, but I think a lot of, you know, I think there's so much there in everything. Like there's something there in everything, no matter what it is, whether I love it or not. Like that's a, a thing I think people have problems with too, is they're so quick to, I, I mean, I don't know, this is like my generation. They'll just call like artists like trash or garbage because of like one or two things. And I'm like, first, like there's a million things. One, like if they're trash, then you do it, like do it better then. But like yeah. two, like it doesn't, you can say, you can not like something, but still admit it's good. That's what I say like okay. a lot during the podcast. I got to like, interrupt you again because I forget. Wait, I got to interrupt you because, oh my gosh, you just spoke my words. Opera. <laughs> okay, opera. My dad's opera. Italian. He's gone now. Took me all over Europe and his dream was to go to the Sydney Opera House in Australia. They were, we go and they were doing an Italian opera. I was an adult. My daughter was like 13 or 14 or 15 when we went. She was mm -hmm. sitting there, very adult-like with my dad, and I hate opera, and I'm like this in a chair. Get me out of here. <laughs> and he's whacking me. But I'm older, I'm a little bit older now, and I, you know, I could say I don't like opera, but I absolutely can appreciate it and say they're brilliant. So yes. go ahead, continue. I had to just tell you. Yes. No, that's a perfect example, like because I feel the same way. Opera is not my cup of tea. You won't catch me at the opera house on Friday nights, but <laughs> <laughs> um you know what I mean? Like that, it's amazing. You can't even, I can't even try to do what they do with the, the notes they hit and just the, the singing is incredible. So like, that's a, yeah, that's a perfect example. Like it's not my cup of tea, but I'm not going to say it's bad because I don't like it or don't listen to it. Like it's still amazing. The things they do are 
inconceivable almost. Amazing, right? But I get it. You said that perfectly. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's so what, like I, I like to no, keep it just like that. Not my yes. cup of tea, you know. Very simple. It doesn't it's not a slight to it or anything. It's just like oh, it's, it's just not for me. But you know, it's still great work. Like good for them because I could I could never do anything like an opera singer. It's amazing. I have a friend who's a poet as well, and I don't agree with cuss words and all that. But I got to tell you, she's an incredible poet. I wish yeah. she toned it down. I'd be listening to her. You know. Right. I'm oh, like, holy so, crap, I can't believe you said that with that. That was so great, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's how it is, though. There's, like, so much. And even then, like, you could take from... the thing, too, is you can take... I think is you could take something from it, if not everything. Like I said, like, I'm not I'm not resonating with opera, really. And, you know, I don't put that on when I'm sad or upset or anything. But... <laughs> I don't know in, in the right mode like if i see that in some like you can usually see them pouring like their heart and soul into it like when you when they sing like that i'm like wow like it's just <laughs> it's astounding and it's kind of like the same that's how it's been like i've been trying to learn the piano recently with you know every with lockdowns and everything figured get up on yeah. skills but like the it's not like the piano is just so amazing to me like that's something where you could vary like you just hear all emotions in each note like it's just incredible so amazing right it's so amazing you know i watch a lot because we've like i said been on lockdown and so i watch a lot of the reruns with agt and you know all those shows right the voice yeah. some of these little kids that get up there and play the piano and play the drums and sing i'm talking five six seven eight year olds mm -hmm. i am blown away i am yeah. blown away. so talent is there and you know alex and I'm sure you've thought of this because of everything else you've been saying to me. I can't imagine you not thinking of this. I always tell people we're all giving gifts and it's up to us to find them and utilize them and share them with the world. It's up to us. Absolutely. It really is. Everybody has something. I think I believe everybody's here for like everybody has purpose here. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no mistakes. I think everything is for a reason and and that's a, another thing too is a lot of people there's so much even more talent that we don't even know exists out there because a, a lot of people don't have great opportunities you know what i mean somebody could be in a third world country that's the, you know doesn't have food or something and they could be an, an amazing singer a ballet dancer or a basketball player really just anything and they don't have the opportunity and they might not ever make it out of their hometown mm -hmm. you know what i mean so I think, yeah, that's perfect. Everybody is a, is a giving gift. It's just yeah. really finding out what your gift is, if not multiple. But I think everybody kind of has their main thing that they can use for good and, and help a lot of people and help relate to people as well. Well, I, my two gifts are talking and my <laughs> art, my crafts, right? My, my, my paintings, my drawings, my writings, you know, poetry. I'm an artist, you know? Um, right. And I laugh. Everyone always said to me, how did you get into this? And I laughed because I only got into it like five years ago, right? And I said, yeah. I should have been doing this my whole life because I was in trouble every single day in school. And I mean, every day for talking. I can't stop. Like that yeah. was my thing. They would put me out in the hall. Mr. Robbins, he's gone now, but he was my science teacher, loved him. He would put me out in the hall whenever I was talking too much. Jerry, get out in the hall. They would have a chair and the desk outside for whoever was bad. I'd be talking, down, yelling down the hall to the people going to the bathrooms. Hey, he would be like, get back in here. Shut up. <laughs> it's like no winning with you. <laughs> you know, so now God uses my voice, you know, and, and we, everyone has to know their worth. That's my favorite saying. And it's even on my thing here. Look, see, know your worth. Yeah. There it is. Know your worth. Okay. Um, <laughs> K-Y-W. We all have worth, guys. Absolutely. I, that's such a. That's a funny and perfect example, too, because you think of like, like even think of you said his name is Mr. Robbins. Yes. Like Mr. Robbins is thinking maybe like, oh, why doesn't she just talk and use it? And you know what I mean? Instead of distracting other people from learning and then here you well, are. Then, no, he wasn't thinking that. I was a kid. You know, he they weren't yeah. thinking that. OK, in grammar school, they're thinking, shut your mouth. <laughs> oh, I got I got to give a shout out. My art teacher, Mr. Gray, he is not only still alive. Are you ready for this? A few years ago. He caught my show live on Hamilton Radio and messaged under it while my show is live and said, Jerry, do you remember me? And it said, Bill Gray. And live on Hamilton, I said, 
my art teacher from grammar school. I said, are you kidding me? You impacted my life. And he did in grammar school. He had me at the top of the art class and kept telling me, Jerry, you're incredible. You're incredible. You're incredible. Do you know we're friends now and we speak? We've talked on That's the phone. Incredible. We've Zoomed. I was in grammar school, kiddo. <laughs> and he made such an impact on my life. Teachers are incredible. Yes, they are beyond words. I've had that's why I was very lucky with my schooling, like just throughout everything, elementary, middle school, high school, college classes. Like I've had amazing, amazing teachers who they teach you more about life than I think than a curriculum. You know what I mean? Is yes. they give you just they give you insight, they believe in you, they they make you believe in yourself too, because you know what I mean? It could be tough and especially in like education where it's just there's a curriculum and there's, you know, teachers to them, to some teachers, it is just like a job. But I think for the most part, most people get into teaching because they love it and they love making an impact on people's lives. And that's just huge. Even that, you know what I mean? From elementary school years ago, and, and it still resonates till today. It's just, it's amazing. Amazing. And, you know, I'm going to switch the coin around and I don't usually like talking negative, but I want to for a reason. If the teacher doesn't have a good impact, they can have it negative impact on a child and that's terrible on their end no but absolutely i want to say that to say this if anyone out there is struggling with that please reach out to someone tell your parents tell the superintendent don't allow it because you shouldn't okay yeah there's mm -hmm. help okay i had absolutely. to say that okay and it is, it is their duty to take you know what i mean like you're their number one priority they should be taking care of you they should be doing everything they can to give you the tools you need in order to further your education or further benefit yourself or your life. Yeah. And it shouldn't ever be like a, a situation where you don't even want to go to class because it's that bad. It should, yeah. it should never be like that. And there is always a way out of it for sure. Cause I, I worked in a school system and I saw some things and reported them immediately. And I laughed. Yeah. I said, this uh, isn't going to happen. And you're not so going to be like this. Nope. Not on my watch. That's great. That's actually, it's funny too. I was actually in um, school for education before I switched my major to audio technical recording. Matter of fact, so I love teaching. I love as well. So cool. I didn't know that. And I, guys, I didn't know that about him. I brought that up just to bring it up. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, um, it's because of like, like we just said, I had so many teachers that really made it like the greatest, biggest impacts on my life. And it was just deeper than school and it was deeper than the curriculum. They made it you know, they made it relate, obviously, it wasn't like completely irrelevant. Yeah. But it, they just they did it in such a way where I was like, how do you even think of that? You know, kind of just like with musicians, like, I'm like, how did they even come up with this? And I think that's just an amazing thing. And that's what I was going for. But I, I love this a little bit much more. So, so but you know why yeah. that's so awesome? Because you have that background. And you can look at what we just talked about, right? And look how beautifully it right. was set. So you mm -hmm. have that and help people out there with that as well. Absolutely. You just you know, like incorporate it into really anything. Um, I learned a lot from like a site. I went to like psychology courses too. And in my first couple of years at uh, community college, those were amazing. Those helped me tremendously just to question things. I think that's why I think about these things so much. Like you said that, like, you know, I'm thinking about people in a studio or thinking about them before social media or thinking about you know, music without the beat in the background, just looking at the words they say. I think it, it comes from a constant place of just questioning things and not in a bad way. You know what I mean? It's not Always like, oh, why it. this? Why that? Yeah. yeah, it's just more of like, you know, what? let's get to the bottom of this. It's kind of like a, a cool little investigation, but you could do it with just about anything and get more answers or more thoughts or even more questions. It's just kind of like a, a beautiful rabbit hole. So I questioned everything in my life. I drove my family crazy. And I mean, I drove them crazy. And that's a really good topic to be talking about, to tell kids out there, question everything, talk to your parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember I was in Catholic school in New York. I grew up in New York, Long Island City. And I moved out of there when I was 12 to New Jersey. And I remember in fourth, fifth grade, we made our communion and confirmation back then very young in New York. And they mm. brought us into these confessional booths, these scary dark rooms. And we had to go in there and kneel on this hardwood and say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I was bad. You know, whatever, right? And mm. I'm not knocking Catholics. I'm knocking what, what the establishment is teaching. 
And I remember mm. going home and saying to my mother, mommy, why do I have to tell that strange man I was bad? He's not my father. God's my father. Can I tell God? And she said, absolutely. And mm. you have to, I never stopped ever questioning things. And you know, here I am today, right? I don't just listen or believe. I'm actually That's looking for something to show you in my R thing. Do you know um, Jeff Rotal? Since you know, yes, yeah, my my dad's a huge fan. Okay, this helped get me into art school. Black and white of the cover, um, Aqualung. Oh, that's a that's a great cover. Okay, that was the cover of Aqualung. I did that, and then Kansas. You knew Kansas? Yes. Oh yeah. Harmonica okay, crazy. Did, okay, I did that one. Wow. So awesome. Okay. Yep. The artwork the best too. Like album artwork. I love it. And you had to do your self portrait and I did it. So there you go. <laughs> but isn't that cool? Artwork is that's the best. So awesome. And even if it's not good artwork, because that's being creative. Yeah. Just scribbling and paint it, whatever it is. You know? Mm -hmm. Even like uh when I had recorded like a few episodes and I had my one friend on and he had never done anything like this. I just had, you know, a second microphone. And I was like, come on, like we can, we talk about music regularly. It's no different. We just have microphones in front of us. So like you kind of get into it and you get more natural, but even like, it's like after we did it, you know, we looked back and he was like, Oh, like I, he's like, I already noticed so many things. Like I said this too much. I did this too much. And I'm like, there you go. Like, it's a perfect example. Like, yeah, my, it's art so no matter what it's good but like you're already looking back and you're like oh i can improve on this i can do this better i can do that better and it's it kind of like same thing so there really is like no bad art it's just everybody's got to start somewhere no matter what it is you know everybody's going to be i'm sure michael jordan didn't pick up a basketball and float to the net like you know what i mean he had to work for it so i'm sure it started with some some air balls here and there you know nobody's perfect it's not going to start off like that you got to work and, and bust till you get there and whether that's painting or drawing you know recording music recording a podcast really anything so i'm gonna tell you two more little snippets about an artist a musical artist and something about me with art when i was in art school the school thought i was the, the queen of the art room you know so yeah. in my mind i was i was great right okay to get into this art school, School of Visual Arts in New York at the time in 1979, they were only accepting like 1,200 applicants out of like 5,000. So the school gave me four art classes my senior year to, or junior and senior year to make sure I got in. Are you ready for this? I finally got the art teacher I never had before also. I had Miss Colasanto, I'll never forget her. She was my art teacher for four years. The other art teacher, I didn't really like her. I never had her, but I had to have her now. She took my self-portrait and that Jethro Tull that you saw, she started scribbling on it with the black, you know, the charcoal. She says, if you yeah. want to get into art school, little lady, you better make your darks dark and your lights light. And I'm crying. And I go to Miss Colisano and I'm like, look what she did. And she said, sweetie, she's going to get you into art school, her. And she did. Wow. Okay? So that was that. <laughs> Now, there is a young man um, on Facebook, and he's a young country singer. And he, he wrote a song, um, John Boy Story is his name. You want to look him up as well, and I can get him for you. He wrote a song, one of his first song, actually, I believe, Thank You for the Doubt. And that was for his gym teacher, I believe, because his gym teacher told him to stop singing. He wasn't going to make anything of himself. It is incredible. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> his gym teacher got to hear his song and said, that's front about me, isn't it? How about yeah. that? <laughs> that is, it's like full circle. Full circle. So Alex, we're coming to the time of the show. We have plenty of time for you. We're coming to the time of the show where I want you to tell everyone what it is you want them to know about you, how to get in touch with you, how to reach out, all your social media. And I also want you to tell us I'm going to be hearing this for the first time as well. When you're going to start this podcast, let's hear it. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, so that means I'm, you're committed. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm on. Um, so to listen to the podcast, I'm on Anchor FM. Uh, it's an app that distributes the podcast out to multiple streaming services. So um, say if you have an iPhone, it's just the button that says podcast. It's called Apple Podcasts. 
but anybody who has an iPhone, you just click on podcast, you search up world to world podcast with it at the number two, not the, not spelled out and it'll pop up. Um, same with like Spotify is a very popular streaming app. It's on there as well. It's on um, Google podcasts, which I haven't personally used and a few others. It's called like overlook or something, or you could just go directly to anchor.fm and you can listen to it there. Um, what I if have, you have an Android? What if you have an Android and not an Apple phone? Android, uh, same things. You could do either Spotify if you have that. You could do Anchor FM, just the website, or okay. you could do like Google Podcasts. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, see, I'm on Twitter as well. Uh, it's at World Two P, and that's the number. So just at World Two P, or if you just search for World to World Podcast, it'll pop up. Um, I still have yet to make a Facebook page. That's my next project. Um, I'm on I'm on Instagram as well. Same thing at World Two P. Uh, just shortened it for that. And uh, I think that's it for social media. If I'm not mistaken. Do you and, have an email? Um, do you have an email? Oh yes, I do. Yeah, World Two World Podcast at Gmail dot com. Straightforward, pretty simple. Same thing. The number two, not the uh, spelled yeah. out version. And um, I have like five episodes, I believe, posted up there. Um, But I haven't put out anything in a a little bit. So I'm, I'm looking to get back into it and start recording more episodes. Um, And I'm going to try to do a little bit more of just like kind of everything. Like I said, I want to get people on for interviews. Uh, I like to do more like musical breakdowns, maybe a breakdown of a TV show that I like a lot. Um, Maybe just like, like I said, a mental health episode, I think would be very refreshing and I think like a lot of people would need to hear that too because that's the biggest thing like I said is just hearing someone else that shares something with you whether it's a struggle or something we're going through because we all are going through something no matter what especially this past year and a half that has been so crazy so um, that's definitely like my biggest goal and I just want to have a lot of people on especially if you make music and you're not known like I don't care if you're famous or not you know what I mean if you're making music and you live two houses down then you know two houses down from me please come over and and you know we'll we'll interview and I could play some of your music and stuff it's it's like a win-win situation you know what I mean both of our art gets shared we get to learn from each other we get to hear you know different opinions and different perspectives so I think it's just it's a beautiful thing and I'm I'm trying to really build it into um like a um, maybe like a multimedia type of uh, I don't even know what I would put, call it like an establishment or something like I, I want to be kind of firing on all cylinders and have a lot of people on board where we can talk about all types of different things even sports I love talking about sports as well um, I did have a I actually was on a podcast before this um, my one friend and I used to run and that was like my first experience dabbling in this uh, uh, forte in this area and we did, it was literally just sports and music. So it'd be like one or the other. And we had like one episode music, one episode sports. So like, that's kind of how it was. And I'm going to definitely get back to that. I know sports have kind of also been crazy. It's just, that's the thing. It's just, everything's been crazy with the, the virus, unfortunately, but it's still the best time to record and put out stuff. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to making a lot of new episodes. Well, now's the time because everybody's stuck in the house. I can get you sports guys. I can get you wrestlers. I can get you singers. I can get you whoever you want. I mean, come <laughs> on. Right? People, you know, Absolutely. Even, the entertainers are going through depression. They're, they can't entertain. They mm-hmm. can't do what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so now's the time to take advantage of this. Mm-hmm. I think about that a lot. I know um like a lot of musicians, people don't realize make most of their money from touring and from selling out stadiums and shows. And that's killing them right now. And I know a lot of them haven't put out like an album in like two years because they were going to in 2020, but now they can't because, you know, they spent so much on the album, you know, with clearing samples and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. Now you can't have a tour to give you money or profit really. So it's just like a lot of artists are struggling. And I know like, that's another thing too, is you know nobody's spared from depression whether you're rich famous it doesn't matter like you said earlier you know elvis's grandson Um, right mm -hmm. and and same thing like i know there's a uh, a basketball player damian lillard he talks about mental health a lot for because it's it's not common like famous people don't really talk about it but it's at the same time like they don't talk about it because people will ridicule them or harass them like oh you have all the money in the world what can you be depressed for it depression isn't a not a situational thing it just happens you know what i mean it's mental health and 
nobody's exempt from that. So I'm going to give you one last opportunity to tell the world and all your fans anything you'd like to tell them right now. Um, basically, uh, I'm just somebody who loves music and I love art and I appreciate it in all forms, no matter what it is, whether it's, you know, or a physical art, like whether it's canvas drawing, it could be music, it could be a podcast, it could be really just anything. Uh, I'm somebody who really appreciates it. And not that I want to force, you know what I mean? Like my, like, oh, you should appreciate this too. But I think it's just, like I said, it's a beautiful thing to take a step back from things and just kind of look at it through maybe a different lens than your own um, and with your own biases and stuff. Maybe just look at it from a different perspective and be open-minded. That is kind of my, my biggest thing. I think open-mindedness is the key to so many things in life, happiness and finding more, whether it be art or finding more people that you meet or more people to talk to or just finding something that helps you, something that you can relate to. I think because I actually, I don't even think I know because when I was in like middle school and such, I really was pretty close-minded. I, I, what, whatever I liked, like I stuck with it. And that's not a bad thing. Like you, you obviously have the things that you enjoy, but it's, you don't want to limit yourself to that because then it's just, you're kind of stuck in a loop almost. Whereas like, if you just open your mind up to new things and new experiences, you know what I mean? The worst, worst case scenario is you don't like it. Like, that's it. It's not like you waste it. You know what I mean? Wow. Two minutes. Oh, I didn't like that song. Okay. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. So I think that's like the biggest thing with my show is just be open-minded and, and hear one another and see one another, you know, as humans, because that's, we're all, like I said, many times, uh, you know, throughout the episode, we're all here for a reason. Like everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a story to share, um, whether it be vulgar or not, you know what I mean? Like it, it's just, it's all experiences. And I think it's beautiful to share it together and appreciate it together. And, you know, maybe put, someone else onto like a new artist or something i think that's so awesome when you know i play a song and people are like oh wow like what is this who is this i'm like yeah like that's one of my favorite things is like when they love something so i definitely and uh i don't know just try to i'm trying to stay consistent as well that's the biggest thing i've, I've noticed from just listening to podcasts and watching uh interviews just with anybody too not just you know, radio hosts or anything, whether it be a basketball player, football player, it's just you have to be consistent with your craft and then eventually it will pay off. Consistency is key. So that was beautifully said. So now's the time where I want to say thank you to you because I'm going to share something with you. I wasn't sure how this interview was going to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of did it as a favor to your mom because I'm a mom and I did talk to you and I thought you were awesome. And I, I knew you had so much to share, but I didn't know a lot. We really didn't have this like question set up, none of that. And I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you, this was probably one of my most favorite interviews. And I don't ever say that to just say it. This was one of my most favorite interviews because you are incredible on that mic. And for such a young man to be thinking and saying the things you've done on this interview, I'm blown away. You gave me chills. So uh -oh. thanks. Listen, thanks to mom. And yeah. <laughs> you're going to go far. You're going to do incredible. And I'm here to help promote you. So, listen, I'm not kidding you. I'll get you guests. Let's get this going. Okay? I would love to. Thank you so, 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 so much. I really appreciate it more than I could even put into words. This is my dream. So, and oh yeah, this is. This is like what I love to do. I love having a conversation. You know what I mean? Like however long we just talked didn't feel like it. It was like five minutes. No. You know what I mean? I could do this all day. I love it. Well, you're going to get to do it every day if you want. Um, I want to share something with, with everyone out there. So I'm going to end this show with a poem from my book, okay? I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. I'd rather be a smartest than a dumbass. I'm going to say something that a lot of you are probably going to disagree with, but hear me out. I don't believe addiction is a disease. I believe it's a dis-ease of the brain cells while using. And it could be anything, guys. It could be sex. It could be food. It could be anything, gambling, whatever. Our brain cells get altered. So, yes, while using, it is a dis-ease of the brain cells. That's what the word disease means. I've even, I'm a nutritional health coach. I've even studied the brain. Okay? So I'm here to give you hope 
you're not powerless. You're not powerless over anything. I will never ever tell anyone not to go to meetings because that might be their only support system. So please go if the meetings are helping you. Um, 30 years ago, this July will be 30 years. I'm gonna celebrate big, okay? 30 years ago, I did everything they told me when I left Princeton House. Get a sponsor, which I did. Go to meetings every day, which I did. By the end of 30 days, I wanted to shoot myself. I wanted to blow my brains out for me. This is why. I had a great support system with my family and friends. And for me to get up there and say, hi, I'm Jerry. I'm an addict and I'm powerless over my disease. Well, I'm not using anymore, so I'm really not an addict right now. And, you know, I don't feel powerless, but if I keep telling myself that over and over and over and over again, it's gonna make me powerless. So I'm gonna go into a room and hear everybody's war stories about drugs and alcohol. Are you kidding? For me, I couldn't do it. Yeah. So if you guys are having a problem and you're struggling, my services are always free. I am there for you, okay? You can grab me on Facebook, look me up, okay? Um, I'm gonna tell you something. You're not powerless over anything. Don't allow the enemy to tell you that. The percentage of, of healing through these programs is like seven to 10%. That means something's wrong, guys. Something's wrong, okay? So having said that, I am there for you anytime, all right? Now, I'm gonna read a poem and I hope this helps somebody out there. It's called Change Your Choice. I had a life-changing moment that I knew had to be. The only way to change things was to first start with me. So I looked in the mirror and woke up one day and thought to myself I needed to pray. So I asked God to change me, to help me stay strong, to clean up my mess, to right what's been wrong. I cleaned up my diet, I cleaned up my room, and I cleaned up all habits with this old dirty broom. I kept going forward and never looked back. I refused to derail, stayed on the right track. I realized my worth and all that did matter through my selfish behavior, the lives I had shattered. I finally decided at 30 years old to stop abusing my body, my mind, heart, and soul. My life-changing choice that I had once made, almost 30 years now, guys, my debt has been paid. So you read all my thoughts on how to stay clean. It's all or nothing, my friend. There's no in-between. To live or to die is a choice you must make. Your life is not worthless and you're not a mistake. One day at a time is the slogan you've heard. It works if you work it while applying his word. For you to get healthy, for your mind not to fail, escaping reality will keep you in jail. With addictive behavior, sex, drugs, food, or money, substituting addictions, now isn't that funny? I'm not an addict, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. May the good Lord bless and guide you. Thank you, everybody. And once this show is out there, I think it's already shared on Facebook, share it because this show today is incredible and will save a life. Thank you, Ruben. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Petito. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an addict. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true, is it really true? Just keep your ideas safe and sound. Safe and sound, safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found, change is found. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last.